Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name's Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you about using the sitemap variable in Middleman. The sitemap variable is basically a variable that you can use to access all of the information about the pages on your website. So by using the sitemap variable, we can loop through all the pages on our website or we can access information about a specific page like the parent pages or sibling pages or, or stuff like that. So we can use the sitemap variable to build different navigational elements or just to learn more about the actual like structure and the place of the current page in our entire directory. The sitemap variable is super powerful and you're definitely going to want to know how it works in order to really optimize your middleman website. First thing I want to do is talk to you guys about the layout that I currently have set up. So inside of my source folder, I have this a.html file B and C and then I have the home page. So I just have a little bit of a basic website directory. What I want what I can actually do is sort of loop through all these pages and use that sitemap variable to learn more about the structure of my website dynamically. So inside of my layouts folder, I'm just going to open up this layout.erb file. And in here, imagine I wanted to create, for example, like a navigational list. And so this list would list out all the pages on my website and it would link to them. I can actually use this sitemap variable to do something just like that. So the way that we can access the sitemap variable is just by typing out sitemap, just like that. And we can use it to loop through some of the pages on our site. I'm going to create a for loop here and I'm just going to say sitemap dot resources. And what this means is it's going to the sitemap, which is like storing information about all the pages and it's grabbing all of the resources and resources are basically just the pages on your site. Okay. And then we can say each do, and then inside of here, we just want to pass F and we can close this off with some ending tags. So what's happening here is we're looping through all of the resources on our site. In other words, we're looping through all the pages on our website. And I can actually prove that to you. We can print out um, the actual page. So we can say f.data.title. And when you refer to f, so that's the variable that's representing the resource, we can access the data. And then from there, we can access the title. And so the title is going to be a front matter variable. So in the cases of these pages, I just have titles stored for each of them. So when I come over here and I refresh my page and actually I'm just going to put a break here. So it's more obvious. I'm here on the home page and you'll notice that I'm looping through all of the pages on my website. And actually to demonstrate this a little bit better, instead of printing out the title, I'm just going to print out the path because some of these pages don't have titles. And you'll see we have a.html and we also have this image that's stored on my website, the home page. We also have this JavaScript file here, the other JavaScript file, some style sheets, and then those other HTML pages. So we're literally looping through all of the pages on our website. And one thing you might want to do is, well, one thing you might not want to do is loop through some of these like JavaScript pages or style sheet pages. So the question becomes, how can we filter the pages that we're actually looping through? And to do that, we can access some other variables inside of the resources and inside of the sitemap resource. So we can actually use an if statement and in here we'll just say if f and there's another variable in here called content underscore type and content type will print out like the type of content that uh, the page is using. So it could tell us like if it's an HTML file or if it's a CSS file or a JavaScript file. Actually, let me show you that really quick. So we can just print out f dot content type and this will now print out information. So we have like text HTML char set UTF eight image. Same thing. This is an HTML. This is JavaScript CSS and HTML. So we can use this content type variable in order to filter the, the different pages that we want to see. So I can just say, if f dot content type and I want to use this special Ruby function called include and what this is going to do is it's going to check to see if the string that we're looking at includes a certain substring. So 
I just want to check to see if HTML is in there, right? If HTML is in the content type, then it means it's an HTML page and it's the type of page that I want to display. So we'll end this. And now inside of here, we can just print out um, the title of the page. So we could say f.data.title. And now instead of having this big list, all we have are the actual HTML pages on our site. So you can take this a step further and we could actually create like a navigational list. So I can make a list item and then inside of here we'll make a link. And inside of the href for this link, we'll link this to the actual page on the site. So I can say f.path. And then for the title of the link, we can just use this f.data.title. So you can see that over here, I'm just accessing the title. So now when I save this and I head over to my website, now we have basically like a directory structure for our site and these are all linked. So if I click this A right here, it'll bring me to the A.html page. If I click B, it'll bring me to B. If I click C, it'll bring me to C. And if I click the home page, it'll bring me back home. So we basically just built like a table of contents for our website and this sitemap.resources.each, you know, looping through the pages on your site can be really powerful, especially if you're building some sort of, like I said, a navigation list, you can actually take this a step further too. So in addition to just looping through all of these resources, you can also access other variables about the individual resource. So, if I wanted to, for example, access information about the current page, I could um, do something like this. So I could say, um, current underscore resource. So this is gonna access the resource that we're currently looking at on the site. And you can access, um, for example, something like dot parent. So I could print out the parent of the current resource. So here on the home page, uh, there's no parent because it's the highest level page on our site. But if I went to this a.html file, it's printing out this hashtag. And so we can actually access the title by typing out dot data dot title. And now it should print out home page because home page is like the parent of this a page. And it'd be the same if we went to uh, this C page it's still printing out homepage as the parent. You can also access, um, instead of parent, you can access uh, child or children. And you can also access siblings. So for example, if I wanted to um, access the siblings of the current page, you could loop through all of the siblings. So uh, I could say current resource dot um, siblings and then we can use that same looping structure so each do f and then we'll end this and then in here i can just print out the sibling name so i could print out f dot data dot title and this will give us the name of all of the siblings of this page and actually i need to put an equal sign there so now you can see it's printing out B and C. We're on this A file and B and C are A's siblings. And if we went to c.html, it would print out A and B because those are um, C siblings. So you can use these like current resource dot siblings. And like I said, there's also, uh, you know, some other ones like you can access the parent siblings and you could also access dot children. So if I was at the home page, I could access the children. Um, so this will print out all of the children of the home page. So you can use these different sitemap resources to build like directories. You could also use it to build like a breadcrumbs navigation or um, like a section wide navigation. So depending on the section you're in, you could list out all of the pages in that current section. I mean, really powerful way to control um, you know, the look and the feel of your site as far as like accessing structured data about your website. So definitely consider using sitemaps when you're building your layouts. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. 
Also, we're always looking to improve. So if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.